So out of nowhere, on a random Tuesday, Nintendo finally killed the Switch Pro rumor mill and replaced it with endless discussion on whether or not the new Switch model counts as a Switch Pro because that's the internet. Apparently we have nothing else to do. We have access to boundless information and entertainment and movies and TV shows and all you can do and somehow we find ourselves just arguing with strangers on the internet about video games. So, the Switch is about four years old by now and anybody who follows the industry should know that you probably shouldn't expect a very drastic upgrade to Nintendo's hybrid console. It's, it hasn't been long enough for us to see a new device, especially because the Switch is still selling like hotcakes and they have done revisions on the original model. That's the one I happen to own. And this is par for the course for Nintendo. They'll put out a console and they'll issue some revisions. This is especially true with their portables. This has always been a thing. So when there's been all of this time, all these speculations about a new Switch model, which people had nicknamed Switch Pro, perhaps some of the speculators said with 4K resolution, I knew that that's likely not the direction Nintendo is going to go. First of all, because like I just said, the Switch is still too recent and it's selling too well for Nintendo to want to splinter off the install base like this and create two different devices that sound pretty similar, which would lead to consumer confusion. That's what happened with the, sw not the Switch, I meant the Wii U. The Wii U was basically that. It was a better Wii that a lot of people didn't understand if it was supposed to be an add-on, if it's exactly the same system with just a tablet-looking controller. They're not going to make that same mistake again, so it was obvious to me all this time that there's no way they're going to put something out right now that's going to fracture, that's going to fragment the, the install base. I can't take credit for this because I find that pretty obvious. This is what a lot of people had been saying, all these reports about a 4K uh, uh, switch. I, I knew that that's probably, we're, we're going to see that eventually, probably. Right now, not the time. Nintendo, and again, this is obvious for anybody who follows the history of the company, they don't really position themselves as a competitor to Sony or Microsoft. They're doing their, their own thing. They want to push the best graphics, the most powerful machine. Nintendo's going a completely different route. So this OLED Switch is in line with what I already expected. So what is this new Nintendo Switch? The new Switch is basically the Switch you know and love, except that, as the name says, it has an OLED screen. Now, I imagine some of you don't have any familiarity with that technology. And I'm going to obviously simplify things a bit, but OLED basically turns off pixels when it wants to display black. With LED, when you wanna show blacks on the screen, you turn down the brightness of that LED and that's never gonna be black enough, which is why the contrast and it's just, the colors don't pop in the same way. My main experience with OLED screens was with my PS Vita. And it's funny because I wasn't familiar with the technology when I first bought my Vita and loading up SNES emulators, I was really blown away by how beautiful the image looked and the colors are so sharp and the contrast so vibrant. And I didn't understand technology back then, so I didn't understand why that was happening. I knew it wasn't the resolution because running old games on newer resolution devices is not gonna make that effect. It took a while, I did some research and I understood that that's what it is. That screen technology makes the blacks much blacker because while well, it turns off that pixel and that just makes for a much, much more crisp image. It's hard to describe, but when you play on an OLED device, you know right away something is different. And this makes me excited to revisit some of the finest looking Switch games on an OLED screen. It, it harkens back to that first experience with the Vita, the OLED screen, the very first generation of Vita had an OLED screen, then they went back to LCD, I assume to cut costs. I'm actually pretty excited, though I don't wanna say I wanna buy it right away and I'll get into that. That, like I wanna see what Breath of the Wild looks like on an OLED, um, I, I mean, Obviously, if you have an OLED TV, and I assume they must be crazy expensive, you already know what they look like, but yeah. They also doubled the storage, which when you say they are doubling the storage, that sounds more exciting and more impressive than what they actually did. You have to remember the original Switch had a paltry 32 gigs of internal storage. Now, obviously, you probably don't care about that so much because micro SDs are so affordable now that you can easily quadruple or you know you can you can easily get 10 times that storage space with one Amazon click. So at the same time because flash storage is so affordable now, I wonder why Nintendo went with 64 gigs. That's just in 2021. It's kind of weird. They also redesigned the kickstand and I have 
a few thoughts about that because first, saying that it was redesigned is giving the original stand too much credit. I would say that this stand has been designed. Anybody who's tried to use that stand on anything other than like granite countertops knows that that thing, well, it's so flimsy, it doesn't open wide enough. If Forget trying to put your switch on like a, a soft surface like a bed or a couch. It's not gonna hold and it blows me away that that didn't come up during research and development. It looks like Nintendo just like tacked that on last minute. And uh, for a device that has a premise like the Switch, where you're going to be playing, presumably in tabletop mode, splitting the Joy-Cons and playing with your friends, the fact that the stand on the Switch is such an afterthought always seemed weird to me. But now you have a proper stand that actually locks into place in different uh, angles. So that's, that's nice. It's weird to be excited about a kickstand, but that's Nintendo. I have a love-hate relationship with Nintendo. What can I say? The sound is better. It, this is something that you don't get through a trailer. You're gonna have to play and, and actually see or rather hear. Uh, that doesn't excite me as much because one, I play with headphones most of the time when I'm playing portable mode anyway. And most importantly, two, there's a glaring omission still with the Switch. The Switch is Bluetooth enabled. For those who don't know, the Joy-Cons connect via Bluetooth, the same with any controller that you might pick up, like the Pro Controller. A lot of people don't understand that Switch is actually Bluetooth capable. Nintendo just doesn't want to open that up to things like Bluetooth headphones. This upsets me a lot because it seems to me that this is more software than it is hardware. I've heard a lot of justifications, things like, oh, because, you know, there's already two Joy-Cons connected, so if you pair headphones, they wouldn't work, you might introduce some latency. I honestly don't buy it. I've been playing with control Bluetooth controllers with my phone, wearing headphones, and I never noticed any problems whatsoever. So I find that a little upsetting, and I'm not buying some weird dongle that goes at the bottom of the Switch. Now it's, I can't, no, that's not happening. I'm not, I'm not buying a dongle to give the Switch Bluetooth capability, something I was using on my freaking PSP Go back in 2009. So that's that's my rant for today. And of course, I guess I should have mentioned this when I mentioned the OLED screen going back to the screen. The screen is slightly bigger this time around. I like that a lot. Though, because of the pandemic, I haven't played with my Switch in portable mode as much, but I have a little bit here and there. And this is something people were already saying before the Switch even came to market when it was first announced. Game design obviously has, has to take into account the device that you're playing on, but the Switch will look, the games will look the exact same way, and by that I mean the user interface and all, not resolution. It's gonna look the same way, like Breath of the Wild looks the same way on portable as it does on the TV. And of course, when you shrink down that image, a lot of things get a little cramped, text gets a little small, and this is, it's made even worse on the smaller device, the Switch Lite. Is it Switch Lite or Switch Mini? I completely forgot. I'm so angry at that console for not being what I wanted it to be. It's not even its fault. It's the Switch Lite, right? Switch Lite. Yeah, Switch Lite. Switch Mini. What am I thinking? So the Switch Lite has a 5.5 inch screen. The regular Switch has a 6.2 inch screen. And the Switch OLED will have a 7 inch screen. It's really only half an inch increase. It remains to be seen how much that is going to matter when you actually you have the device in your hands. But I bet it's going to look better because a little bit bigger and OLED. I'm in. Except for the fact that they made it $50 more expensive, which is odd to me. A redesign so many years down the line that is actually more expensive than the base model, which in my opinion, it should be replacing. It's, it's an odd move for me. Overall, the Switch OLED is not whatever you're gonna call it. It's not for me. I, it's, it's, oh, one more thing I almost forgot. The dock now has an ethernet port, so you can actually plug it into LAN. Now, the Switch is not really a console that I think of being like a, an online multiplayer powerhouse. Of course, if you're into the online Mario Kart community or let's be honest, the only game that really matters is Smash. And I suppose Splatoon, sure. But that's about the three, right? So, and, and we're talking competitive games where that extra boost of speed is going to reduce your latency enough that you're going to be more competitive against the people you're playing against. Sure, I'm sure the Smash community is probably psyched by this. I, I gotta ask Bob what he thinks, because I haven't seen his video yet. I assume he has made one, because he's not lazy as me. I took too long to make this. Anyway, yeah. It seems like everything that's amazing about the Switch OLED is either if you play portable primarily, right? If you don't have a Switch already, obviously that's pretty exciting. Battery life is about the same as the most recent model that had a battery revision. So, you know, big screen, OLED, better sound. 
overall, it's nice if you, like I just said, if you're thinking of buying a Switch, I would say yes. If you can spare the extra $50 US, of course, here in Canada, I assume it's going to be between $80 and $100 more expensive. I would say go with the OLED Switch. It's going to look better, bigger screen. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. For somebody who already has an OG Switch, now is not the time. Um, and they're not going to put out, like I said, the actual Switch Pro. Because believe it or not, I know this sounds weird if you don't follow social media, but there was a lot of people going back and forth as to whether we can call this a Switch Pro or not. A lot of people believe that ideologically, if you can call it that, it's not really a Switch Pro. It's the same Switch you're already used to, just, you know, a little bit um, snazzier. It's a new Switch. I'm, I'm going to call it the new Switch because OLED Switch just sounds weird to me. I'm going to skip this one. Uh, and I know I said that about the original Switch, and then I became in love with the system. And that was primarily Bob's fault. But this one, I can confidently say, uh, I'm going to skip. I don't plan on selling my Switch. I suppose if, if you have an old Switch and you sell it, and then you just add a little bit extra and you get the new one, I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to do that or just even gift their old Switch, if you can afford that, uh, to a, a younger sibling or something like that. I'm fine. Uh, I'm playing mostly on my TV anyway, and I don't need the extra speed because I don't play anything online on my Switch. I have to actually double check if I even still have Switch online. I don't remember the last time I renewed it, so maybe it's up. Anyway, this is what I think. What do you think? Is this something that you wanted? You're going to buy? You're going to sell your old Switch? You're going to wait for the quote-unquote Switch Pro? Because, and that's the thing, right? When the, the announcement hit and I saw it popping on social media, I'm like, okay, finally, the years of speculation, just that's all over, that's behind us, there it is, there's your Switch Pro, but no, we're still going to have a couple of years more of speculations and leaks and all these industry insiders saying that they just partner with some screen manufacturer and it, whatever, right? Like we, we, you're used to that. If you follow Switch News as much as I do, you're probably tired of this and well, guess what? It's not gonna end. But what is going to end is this video. If you enjoyed this, yes, I'm back to YouTube now for good. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on social media. I'm very active on both Twitter and Instagram, primarily Instagram these days, which is tricky for me because I'm Brazilian. I have a Brazilian channel, but I also have this channel and I have to go back and forth between both languages and I create content on social media. And I hope you enjoy that kind of stuff. So all the links are on the description as always. But let me know if you're interested in buying this new Switch, if you're going to skip it all together. I, I want to hear. I want to, because that's the thing about being a content creator. Sometimes we're so stuck in our head and we saw all these different analysis and it, form, it forms your opinion, but you forget that you're in a bubble. Sometimes you're the minority. Maybe everybody's excited about this and I just haven't paid attention to the right people who are talking about it. I'm talking really fast today. What the hell's going on? Anyway, that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done. And I'm back.